Are there any additions to the agenda? Or, I'm sorry. You don't need to be sorry. We'll have a blessing. <laughs> okay. Let's pray. In about 30 seconds, I forgot you were there. That's okay. <laughs> Dear God, we thank you for the city of St. John. We pray for those in leadership in this community. Please give those here in attendance the wisdom to make decisions for the betterment of the St. John community. Help the discussions between the council members to be direct and yet kind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now you can go. <laughs> God bless you. Are there any additions to the agenda? I have one for vacation time. <laughs> Are there any other additions to the agenda? Take a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Are there any citizen comments this evening? Consent agenda. Approve minutes for regular meeting of 12-2-2014. Approve appropriation ordinance 12-8-2014 in the amount of 1,759.73. And approve appropriation ordinance 12-16-2014 in the amount of 31,423.82. Second. Is there any additional discussion? Are there funds available to pay this? Yes. <laughs> Are there any other additional questions or comments? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. No? Okay. Uh, I've got on here FACO tires, and uh, per discussion at a previous meeting, I got uh, price for. Uh, the tires uh, without the government discount, and uh, this is from s, &S Tires, uh, Marshall Sanders, and on these tires like this, counting the mounting and uh, dis or dismounting and mounting and disposal fee and everything, uh, the difference between the two paying the full price and the government discount on this kind of surprised me actually. Uh, it's only 80 Eighty-one dollars and eighty-four cents. Entire or total? Total. Yeah. He did say on truck tires, like what the policeman called, he says, he goes, I'm not even going to bid them. He says there's just too much difference. But on these tires here, I actually thought there would be quite a bit of difference. But he said the vehicle tires, truck tires, he said there's a tremendous amount of difference. So uh, his price on this uh, for uh, four tires, including mounting and balancing, for uh, uh, the government uh, full, or not the government price, but the full price was $2,800, and with the government discount is uh, $2,718.16, so that's $81.84 difference, so that's what it would be, so $81.84. So. I know for that tire, my recognition or my thought would be keep it local. Okay, so let's. Oh, I guess I make a motion for <coughs> buying backflow tires from S and S tire for twenty eight hundred dollars, mounted and balanced or whatever. Is it twenty eight hundred dollars? Twenty eight hundred dollars each. Second. Okay. <coughs> Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Five uh, our superintendent's report, uh, and we're still working on the water line. It seems like things come up every day today. We spent about an hour and a half on us all we could do with things that come up and have problems at the sewer ponds and there's other items that come up, so we're still chugging along, so uh, we'll get keep, keep working on it. Uh, as far as on the addition to the agenda, the, the vacation time, uh, I just wanted to ask with you know, the extra time or the time we're putting in, it makes it hard to get off for vacation time. I've got six days and six and a half hours I need to get rid of before the end of the year to lose it. And Ruben has five days and 45 minutes. So just wanted to run that by if you let us carry it over. We can still have a chance to maybe take some 
before the end of the year, but I just want to go by. And we agree that we would either use it or lose it. I mean, that's what we agreed with on the police department and everybody else, correct? I believe so, but. What does anybody else remember on that? I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, I that, was, uh, that was the last consensus or vote. That was two years ago. That's mm -hmm. the way I remember it as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay, we'll take it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, that's all I had. <clears throat> okay, for the radios, the county had a meeting with somebody in the radio. I don't know who it was, but in a couple of years, they were saying we we're going to have to narrow band again. Same thing we went through two years ago. So they've decided to switch from VHF. To UHF to get away from that, which means they are taking down all their VHF towers and they're going to put one UHF tower up. So we are going to have to purchase all new radios in order to stay on that, on well, in, in order to use the radios. So we I've got a quote, which these are not. This does not um, include any uh, discounts for quantity or government tax funded discounts so we're not quite sure on on that yet we're, they're still trying to get a figure on how many radios they're going to have to buy but <clears throat> the total of mine the maximum I'm going to have to buy is 13 radios for a total of $8,705.45 and two radios for the trucks at a total of 505 or er, each 505.12 for a total of 1010.24 which is a total of 9715.69 and that would be the total that I mean like I said we haven't got any discounts on quantity and uh, what we're thinking about doing is if the county goes in, maybe the county purchases all of them, and then they get a discount, and then we buy the radios from them at a discount. What did you say the 13 radios were going to cost, Mike? $8,705.45. And what was the total, Mike? $9,715.69. And we've decided to all, I mean, we talked about it, and Countywide, we're going to have the same radios, and the county's going to buy all the software so they can program them if need be. We'll buy the same radios that they're going to buy. And they've already moved to do this? Yep. They've already purchased all the uh, radio tower stuff, all the antennas. Everything and about the radios, right? Everything about the radios. They have not purchased the actual radios. <laughs> That's probably highway department and... That's, that's, that's everybody. Fire, everybody. Fire we're, all, we're all dispatched through the county. The only person that it probably wouldn't affect would be Mel because he can actually use. They he keeps his own channel, and the city pays for it, so he won't be able to use any of the repeaters because they're going to be gone. But he can probably use his radios as basically a glorified walkie-talkie. Do you have a deadline? Not yet. When they. Our old radios won't work, or as far as I know, as soon as they get, they're they're gonna put the tower down at the county. The county's already got a tower, so they're gonna extend. The last I heard, they're gonna extend that tower and put the antenna on it, and uh, then after that, they're gonna switch over as fast as they can get the radios. But ours will be just obsolete. Just boom, throw them in the trash, yep. or is there a reason? well? Cycling. We can try to sell them. Yeah. Are a lot of departments going to this? I mean, is this something I could well, put on the city clerk's list, sir, to see if we could move them that way? Yeah, I mean, a lot of them are going, a lot of departments are going 800. The big departments are How going 800. Little ones? Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's probably still going to be a demand for those radios somewhere. So, I mean, we could probably...
sell them. I know the county possibly going to try to sell all the radios that they have, so. I mean, we can, it's not going to hurt to try. Somebody will buy them. So. But that does not include antennas or anything. Well, I mean, we're only going to need two antennas, which probably shouldn't be that much. And like I said, that's going to be the absolute maximum because hopefully we get a fairly decent discount for quantity because I'm, 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 I know the county's going to buy 60 or 70 radios. So. So are you looking for authority to purchase well, or are you looking for... What me and John had discussed is maybe, uh, I don't know what you call it, Look at encumbering, encumbering this some. budget because you're not looking to do that this month. So. Right, right. So this year, so at our next meeting when we do our year end meeting, we'll have we'll look at his budget and see how much we can go ahead and encumber out of this budget of 2014's budget. So between the two budget years, he may not have a problem with coming up with the funds. Right. With this being a max, and so you're not really at this point needing. A motion to do it, you're informing, right? Is this the same radios that's under the police department? Mm, yes. And how many are you going to need them? Four. Because we, with the uh, the two UHF units that, that I um, asked for extra funding for this year for in the car, um, we'll be able to use those, so we'll just need to replace the handhelds that we carry on our person. You can, you'll still be able to use the radios in the car to talk to dispatch? Yeah, the, the new UHF radios we bought this year that, that we bought for the purposes of communicating with our surrounding counties, uh, they're, they're on UHF. And so we, basically since they've been purchased um, recently enough, then they're going to, they'll be able to convert them, I'll convert them over, basically just add our channel into it. <clears throat> Their plan is to go to analog, and then as soon as they get the analog and everything up, we're going to switch to digital. So these radios, the, we're all going to be on digital instead of, instead of analog. So these radios are all digital compatible. Okay, so you, it'll be on the agenda for the year and meeting then? Yeah, I, I will include it in the encumbrances. Okay. So you'll see it both for Adam and and that's all I have. Are there any other questions on the videos? Is there any way you could just go back to like a pager system where you and your deputy fire marshal had pager? Pagers aren't any cheaper you, you than radios. You would radios. have radios and they would just get paged. We'd, we'd, still have to, we'd still have to purchase all new pagers and they run just as much as a radio if not more. I mean, I haven't looked at any UHF pagers, but I know the last time we were going to purchase radios, it was cheaper to buy radios than it was pagers. And there's not any way we could just get paged on our cell phones? No. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Because <laughs> it seems to, I get paged quite often. <laughs> so if you were in a house fire, you'd get out your cell phone and call outside. Hey. Oh, you're, yeah. You're talking from inside yeah. the fire to the truck. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely three or four or whatever there. <clears throat> <clears throat> they did. The county did try a pager system on the phone, and it was fairly expensive. Because dispatch has to page it out and then type it out. And it was fairly expensive. They had a trial on it, but it, w it wasn't going to be feasible. What's the reason for switching, Mike? <clears throat> the guy said that they're going to have to narrow band again, so we'd be in the same position we were two years ago. So we'd have to upgrade our radios again, and he said that in the next three or four years after that, it's probably going to happen again. Because they're getting so many cell phones that they're narrow banding all the... They're trying to get room for all these cell phones. They're essentially taking public safety and fire EMS and narrow banding it for the public sector. So when we narrow banded the first time, we lost range to where 
we might be able to, uh, for instance, if we if we transported somebody to the jail in Great Bend, on a good day we could communicate, you know, that 30 mile distance on our radios and our cars. Well, now that they've narrow banded, that's come down to about 20 miles, which cut it into about a third. So, again, once we narrow band again, then that's going to cut us at least a third or a half again. So, it's a big deal for the sheriff's department because they might get five mi five ten miles out of town and not be able to communicate with their radios. And the and Stafford, they can't hardly talk to, to dispatch from over in Stafford, so that's basically one of the reasons they're doing it, and the fact that they're going to do the narrow banding again. So they just figured instead of fighting it every single time they want a narrow band, we'll switch to UHF and don't have to worry about it anymore. Well, you two guys both run radios. Do you have any problems? Uh, I don't. Uh, we have our own repeater. Yeah. Have you been notified of this? Mm -hmm. Do you have a problem? But the licensing is done different for right, yeah. For the private sector versus, do you guys didn't have to narrow safety. band the last time? We did. Yeah, it's all it's totally separate deal. Something set down, set down from the federal level. Or? Probably, yeah. I mean, there's just no way around it. I mean, we don't really have a choice. They've already purchased all the stuff. They're moving ahead with it, so. <clears throat> the city doesn't have a choice, but the private sector has a choice. Well, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, but they don't have to narrow band. I'm saying. Yeah, their radios work, but ours aren't going to work unless we do it. Your well, yeah, we won't be able to talk to anybody because they're switching to UHF, which is ultra high frequency instead of very high frequency. Okay. Public sector and private sector are very different as far as the regulations that they will come They hold public sector to higher standards, more accountability. It's just the nature of it. Are there any other questions or comments? Chief Saylor? Uh, for our radios, the, it would be four handheld radios. Uh, would be The total would be 2,678.60. And again, just like Mike, that's, that's the, uh, the high point. That's without any discounts or anything like that that might be coming about when they're ordered. Will uh, you and Mike know the discount price before our last December meeting? Uh, I doubt it. I, I doubt that because I, I had asked them last week uh, when they gave us the figures and they didn't know and I talked to them about 2 o'clock today and they still hadn't. The, the problem we're running into is the county hasn't made a decision when they're actually going to purchase the radios. Oh. Um, I thought you said they've done it all. It's done deal. Everything they, but the radios. Everything they're purchasing the radios next year oh. on next year's budget. So they're gonna have to wait till after the first of the year before they purchase the radios. They've already purchased all the antennas and all the all that stuff. Next item would, uh, uh, would be the non-wage compensation. Um, I guess you would, I mean, however we want to start to discuss that or get into that is whatever you guys want to do. I think the uh, the biggest thing we were looking at was um, on call time and how that was going to be handled. <coughs> Are you referring to the eighty dollars per weekend on the that was passed in nineteen ninety five? Well, no, no, per weekend. So it says eighty dollars per regular weekend standby period. No, that's what not. Are you looking at? It's it's 
it's on the back side. And thirty dollars reach holiday. Those are for our regular department. Yeah, this this is for the yeah, like for Mel's guys and stuff like that. If, if is the way the way ours works um, is I believe it's set up. John, it was was it after twelve hours? Is that right? Actually, I'm going to go make one more sheet. I thought I had this in there. Excuse me. It's eight hours when there's is the way it was set up before the change. Okay. If you look at the general order fifty, police operations under procedure fifty point one says that they're going to strive for continuous and immediate 24-hour coverage and respond to emergency situations. There are times, however, due to constraints on manpower, the department cannot provide full-time 24-hour coverage. In these situations, officers will be required to be on standby or on call. Um, and then it goes, and then it, I'm assuming there's more to it than this, but basically, if I'm understanding this right, um, so for example, if you had an officer on vacation and then you had an officer go down sick, and the two officers that were then left would be looking at potential standby pay. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Correct. And, and that's good. That's kind of why I gave. Thanks. Um, that's why I gave the example um, of what I gave with just just a regular work week, um, with with nobody on vacation, nobody on sick leave, everybody here, um, you know, with the, the the eight hour shifts we're working in a forty hour week, and two days off that week, just with the four officers, um, you have eight days off, and there's only seven days in a week. So, um, for instance, um, when we had four officers when I was uh, when I was the sergeant. Um, Charlie had Tuesday, Wednesday off. Aaron had Thursday, Friday off. Sonny had Saturday, Sunday off. And I had Sunday, Monday off. So Tuesday um, was basically, or Monday, I'm sorry, was basically our um, carryover day where we had two people off. So that's essentially, you're going to have, you know, since you got two people off, you only got two people working, covering 24 hours. So that would be the days you would have. Um, either two people working a 12-hour shift, each with four hours on call, or again, like I stated, I think it'd be, it would be appropriate to give those guys the option that are working that day. If they wanted four hours of overtime that week to cover a 12-hour shift, then I think that would be appropriate. I, I don't think that it's something that we want to make mandatory um, because in, in a small department, we're all essentially on call all the time anyway. If something big happens, then we all know that, that we're going to be called into work. So I, I really don't want to, to make any overtime that's not an emergency uh, mandatory. Um, but again, you know, we've all got uh, vacation time and stuff as part of our benefit package. So if we have somebody sick, we have somebody at training and somebody at vacation at the same time, if somebody takes a week's worth of vacation and somebody's at training for two or three days, then we're with two people for that period of time. This sheet that I gave you is um, what is in the, was in the police manual and amended on 9595. And then those things changed by the motions that were also in your packet there. This was where it started. And basically what that means is that the officers would maybe have up to eight hours of on-call time that there was no compensation for and anything from nine hours to 24 hours they had forty dollars of compensation that's within the work week and then anything after that would be the 80. And that's how it was until they went to paying um, the on-call time or standby time, um, whether they 
get any or not. Most of the time they always did, mm -hmm. but the motion was made that they would get paid whether they did or not. And did they establish an amount? Just to continue the way it was, the $40 a, a week. I would like to alleviate the on-call time and just raise their pay, their bi-weekly pay by 40 bucks. Is, that was in the middle of the road for what's his name's report and alleviate all on-call time. You mean on-call pay? On-call pay, because as he said, it's a small town and they all know they're going to be on-call anyway. So I would like to alleviate it and just go to up there by weekly pay by 40 bucks as, as his rough rule of thumb was and go on with it. That motion? Can be. I was just my discussion at the else? point. So you think it sounds good to me. <laughs> can, we, can, we, uh, <coughs> can I ask a question though? I mean, so you're saying just increase their salary rather than giving them $40 so it's increase the same. their hourly wage by whatever that would equate to. So that they get an extra 40 bucks every two weeks. So mm -hmm. that's what we're doing anyway. Right now. For their on call. Well, what he's saying, see right now every pay period. Um, you guaranteed. Every every pay period they're getting $80. Because mm -hmm. they're working right. they're uh, working um, 20 hours of, of on call time a week. Mm -hmm. um, right now. Now obviously again when we get four that's going to change. My only concern is that if for some reason somebody's off again, for an, if somebody has a surgery for an extended period of time, um, we lose a guy again, we're back down to three for some reason. So I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea um, when we're fully staffed um, because that should, I agree, that is a pretty good middle of the road to cover um, you know, what on, on call time we'll probably be doing. Um, it's just if there's any way that we can put some kind of a, which I know is going to be difficult to... I was going to say, you always have the option to come back to council and make a request okay. to change something. I mean, that, that's obvious by what we're doing here tonight. And should we have somebody quit or somebody go down with an illness for a long period of time, you're going to be informing the council of that, yeah. and they would have the option at that point to make adjustments as they see fit. So that would be, I think, the best way to handle it. Sounds good to me. I don't know if council agrees with that or not, but... Yeah, make that more self -like. Some of my thoughts were that since we had the uh, USD 350 strongly recommend a four-man crew, <clears throat> will you be following any of their in-session school activities to where they're off for three months during the summer? Will you stress to your employees to take their vacation during that time so that you're funded or uh, staffed during school session? Unfortunately, I can't, I can't dictate when they take their leave. I mean, that's a benefit that's provided to them. I can't tell them. Well, like at school teachers, I mean, that's it's in their contract. Do we need to make that in our contract? But that's one reason we have a fourth officer. You guys need to all... I mean, it's probably not going to work out every time, but we strongly recommend that you take those three months towards your vacation time. Can we do that? Is that an option? You know, I, I think, I mean, it's... You and the council, anybody? Well, I see some I issues. I, I see some issues with that just in, in the fact that we already have, you know, for instance, we work all the holidays. So sometimes, it's, although we absolutely love the benefit that we get to take that time off another time if we're able to, but because we already work it, sometimes it's difficult to get that time taken. Um, and then to try to dictate that everybody's going to try to take that amount of time all within a few months. Because then again, if you do that, and then you have four guys all wanting to take off the same week, uh, yeah, how are you going to pick and choose who's going to take off? And not? In, in the personnel manual, um the employees are to um, put in for their vacation time and to their supervisor, and that supervisor then okays it. So, I mean, if you had somebody you knew was going to be in training 
and somebody that asked for vacation time, you could ask them to choose a secondary, a, another option, perhaps. You know? Well, yeah, I don't, yeah, so I understand it, it, that. So the chances of having that happen may be less difficult, but really, seriously, don't you have an awful lot of overtime in the summertime because the kids are out of school? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, so, I mean, it's, it's obviously busier. Yeah. yeah. How many hours a week do you spend at the school? Like in the school? Yeah. Mm. Do, I mean, just doing walkthroughs and stuff, maybe an hour. I mean, I'm, I'm not stationed at the school. But, I, well, I guess it depends. I mean, if you count 20 minutes or so, before, you know, patrolling before school, being around the school during lunch hours is another 30 minutes, another 30 to 45 after school. So, I mean, the daily deal. Two hours a day? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, yeah, a couple hours a day probably. Not, I mean, like I said, not in the school, but yeah. in the area of the school. Yeah. Sometimes in the school. Oh yeah, well, yeah, we do we do walkthroughs quite often. And with this fourth officer, you're still a patrolling officer, correct? Oh yeah. So we only have two officers on duty at the same time. No. The o the only time we're going to have two officers on duty at the same time is. For instance, Jubilee, we would, it would be really nice to do that. Um, there are times that I will, uh, and, we, and we've done it on Mondays right now as our carryover day, so lots of times uh, Aaron will work like a 4 to noon shift while I'm working 8 to 4, and he's out in the early morning hours, and then that 8 to 12 is, him, as a chief and a sergeant, our, you know, time to get together maybe once a month and kind of meet and go over things that need to be gone over. Right. But, with with the exception of that, yeah, I mean we're like I said, we're we are committed to, to doing whatever we can to keep as much twenty four seven coverage as we can. The other the other thing I would like to see is a limit on overtime. In two thousand and nine with four officers they put in two hundred and forty six hours of overtime. With three officers this year 12, 12 months back from today, basically, correct? Or last no, month? No, no, no. What, what, that was not. That was 2013, I think. Oh, that's from 2012. I gave you that summer sheet. It was on the, Oh, I didn't give you that summer sheet. Sherry. Oh. 2012 with three officers, you carried 503 hours of overtime. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a limit put on overtime, say of 270, 275 hours. And that's that's given more hours than even what you carried as four officers mm -hmm. for whatever emergency or whatever. But that way we make sure we limit the amount of overtime that we're paying. We, uh, and I mean, I, I personally, I mean, I thought giving him an extra 25 to 30 hours was over the last year or a previous year's deal was more than enough. But, but. I mean, it's one thing I can tell you we don't abuse overtime. Well, I know that, but I, I mean, there, there's no reason to not have a cap on it either, in my own opinion. Okay. I mean, if there's a reason or something at that point, then we should, you should come to the Council and say hey, we're going to run over, and this is why. And, hmm. and at that point, we can say either yay or nay. And if not, then you just adjust the schedules accordingly. Sure. I mean, it would be my own opinion of, the, of how that would work. So. Does that work for you? Or you yeah, like, yeah. I mean, it's like I said, we're we're willing to work. With whatever, I mean, Somewhere around 270, 75 hours. I mean, whatever. I mean, it obviously, I mean, you know, with four hours. I mean, that's that's an average of 1.1 hours per man per week of overtime. Now you're basing that on year. four or three, because I don't get paid overtime. On well, I'm basing that on. You that said would be four divided by three. Okay. Yeah, whatever. I'm just right. I'm basing it off the four or three men. Right. 
So, and, 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 and it really ought to base it off the total person. I know you don't get paid, but right. it's still right. based yeah. off the total people that's in the department. And that's one thing we really tried to concentrate on this year too is, you know, when the guys are on call, if they get a if they get a dog call, that a always running around the street. Well, we're letting them run until when they come on shift, then they'll take care of it. Um, if it's an emergency or it's, you know, that same chihuahua is chasing somebody and biting the mail lady or something, then we're going to go take care of it. But some of that discretionary kind of stuff that isn't an emergency, it doesn't have to be taken care of right then, okay. then they're not going out on their, during their on-call time to encumber that overtime for something that can be taken care of later. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's fine with me. And then, I mean, I know you can't outright tell us your schedule, but you will have officers on duty actually patrolling, not sitting at their house, hmm. from overnight hours, yep. or sitting up here in the office. Well, they're going to be up here in the office some point in time doing paperwork. Well, I know that, like but, that, but yeah. not all night. I no. mean, so they're out patrolling and actually doing what we want them to do. Hmm. With four officers, they're going to be, the patrol car is going to be in up town from, eight, from midnight to 8 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the morning, correct? It was going to be somewhere in town, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's going to be moved. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's another thing we've done with our um, our log sheets. We've, we've made a, uh, basically, a, a, I don't know whether you'd call it a graph. We have every every business, everything we can think of listed on the back of that for a checklist. Uh, checking doors, shaking doors, checking businesses, checking locks on our um, storage facilities and stuff like that. And then that's that's going to be another way I was going to say, I remember when we used to have four officers, you actually saw them walk around the square and, mm -hmm. and do that. So. And you got to be there when Dollar General closes at like 10 o'clock at night on your schedule? Or your they, are, and they already do that. They bounce, they go back and forth between Dollar General and the shortstop. Um, now sometimes they may not be sitting in Dollar General shortstop's parking lot, they may be across the street watching over there. But. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's already. So you're you're taking care of Dollar General and the shortstop. Oh yeah. Whenever they close up at ten o'clock, yep. correct? Yep. And a liquor store. We're we're somewhere in the area. <laughs> Don't let that one get broken into. <laughs> well, they they've got the best security system in town. So I wish some others would follow. Don't let it get broken into. Keep that one here. You say you're looking for a cap of two hundred seventy-five hours. Mm-hmm. Then the additional forty dollars. Well, I haven't made any motions. I'm okay. just—I mean, that's—I can make motions, but I, I just bring it up as a discussion. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, I'll, I'll make a motion that we. Is there? Well, hang on a second. Is there any further discussion with regards to what we've been talking about? Anybody else have a thought, an opinion that they want to express? I don't have a problem with it in any way. All, and I don't have a problem with the extra $40. It'd be $80 on a two-week pay period, right? $40, uh, $40 on a two-week period. $40, uh, $40 on a two-week $40 on a bi-weekly pay period. That's his. Okay. That's the middle of the road deal. Okay. It was, I mean, his recommendation was either none, 40 or 80 I, I think it's... With four officers, I would think the 40 would cover. No, I mean, not every time, but there's going to be times when it's overpaid, too. Mm -hmm. and, and as it's been said, if there's a problem or anything, then you always come to council. Mm -hmm. Are you clear with that, Adam? Yep, absolutely. You understand it's per pay period, not yes, yet two weeks. So it would actually be $20 a week. Yep. Okay. Okay. Then it sounds like council's at a basic consensus if somebody's interested in making a motion. I'll make a motion that we do away with on call time all together and we raise their bi weekly pay by forty dollars and that we limit on our uh, You mean on call pay? Yeah, on call pay. Okay. Yeah, we eliminate on call pay, sorry. Okay. All together and we raise their bi weekly pay by forty bucks per officer. Semi-monthly. And also put a cap on it. We'll do a 275 hour cap per year of total overtime hours. I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion? 
Have you had any applications? Yeah, sent out nine so far. We got three back. 275 hours for the department. Mm -hmm. And that is a year, correct? Mm -hmm. okay, is there any further discussion on the motion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. The other, the other thing that Joe had talked about, and it's not necessarily in that report, but you know, the screening or the, the Evaluations that you, each officer had to go through. Um, he, he, you know, when he was talking to us, as I remember right, he was saying that that was like a hot deal. Every officer went through it so, every so many years, and then new hirees went through it before they were actually hired. You, yeah, you have to before you can even go to the academy. You have to pass a psych exam. Right. Right. But I mean. I really think, in all honesty, it's not a bad idea for everybody to go through it every now and then. I mean, what you guys see, what you do. One thing I might mention, if you remember correctly, he can he bold faced lie about that. Because I talked to the assistant chief in Hutch, and they have never done that before. Right. I have talked to numerous chiefs. Um, that is not a that is not. I mean, if you guys want that done, I don't have a problem with that. But that's not that's not a practice, and it's that was a hard one for me to swallow because. That cost over a thousand dollars out of my budget that was based on a lot. Well, so, I mean, I personally think it's not a bad idea, especially on new hire. Well, I mean, it has you know, to be. if he's right out of the academy and he just took it, it'd be one thing, but if he's well, five I mean, or I mean, ten years uh, down the road, I don't honestly think it's bad money spent. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, that's. I don't know what everybody else thinks about it, but I honestly don't think it's a bad idea. You know, I mean, I agree that it's a thousand dollars out of your budget, but it's. Not necessarily a bad thousand budget. Well, it's not. But if, it's, if it's something, it gives that you, us some liability eases and everything else. If something would happen. Yeah, and if it's something you guys want to do, you know, if, I mean, if we can talk about it now or later or whatever, um, set up a yearly kind of thing where we can budget for it, and then the budget kind of becomes a non-issue on that. Um, my my pro biggest problem is just how you know I felt that was. Right. Well, I, I understand that, but no. I mean that was a, that was a hurry up deal, but. Right. I, my but yeah, so I would like to see at least a, a fairly current one on the new employee okay. that we're hiring in, or either that, or they just have to go through one. And, well, they, they do. They they have, like I said, to even get into the academy, they have right. to, to take one. Right. right. But what I'm saying, if that happened right there, yeah. if right. that happened within the last four or five years, it's one thing. If it's it happened twenty years, so you're years, talking about if we hire somebody that's already right. been right. through the academy. Right. right. If it's if if it's yeah. five years down the road, then. To me, from a liability standpoint, that relieves us of some reliabilities and also reassures. Yeah, I mean, well, what do you think on a deal like that? And to, to make that more clear, real quick, that is our policy too. It doesn't matter if they went to the academy last year. They have to go through a screening they, before they, they have to go through get a screening to be hired. Okay. Well, cool. I didn't know it was policy. Yeah. Is there in that screening? Is there any drug, alcohol? That's separate, but yeah, we do that also. They have to go through a. Uh, they have to pass a physical um, at Dr. Farmer's office, and during that physical, they go through a drug and alcohol screen, um, and then they also go through the, the uh, psychological. Is there any follow-up on anything like that during the year after they're hired? <clears throat> no, but only because that's not city policy. I, I, so we don't do random drug testing. I think it would be a good idea. I, I think it's. I think any city's kind of crazy right. if they don't. Um, but again, that's not something that's done because it's, it's not part of our policy, and that is another expense. Well, cities can go together and form their own consortium, so you're dealing, you know, to actually be right, random, like we have to have so many employees pulled every year if, if we were just doing it on our own, or every quarter, or every month, whatever it is. Or we, what we do is belong to a great big, huge consortium. But pay our dues. There may be five months where none of us get tested, and then the next Two times we got two or three guys going in, and it may be total repeats from the same guys, but it still meets the government's requirements as far as our DOT and all that other stuff that we have to. And I don't know if the city, I mean, evidently they don't even have to justify it, but I mean, as far as the random drug test. But yeah, as long as you make it random. To me, that's not a bad idea to have a random drug test. 
I don't think that's a bad idea for all of the city employees. Yeah. Can you put out a request on the list, sir, and see if there's a consortium of some kind out there that we yeah. might be able to become a part of? But really, I mean, if it's not required, there's not going to be one. You know, as far as us, as far as us under DOT, we're required to meet them certain requirements. Okay. Do you belong to the consortium too? Policy, okay. and we'll go from there. So. Well, you can also say you might even be able to contact like Stafford Hospital because I know they do it for their employees. So, so yeah, that, I mean, well, that's where we go when we mm -hmm. when we get pulled. You know, Can't over there, do. we carry the kits and we just run over there. They dump the blue water in, sign our papers, and away we go. So in government. You can be intoxicated or high as a kite, but your radios will work. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you can operate them. Did you have anything else, Chief? Yeah, yeah the only thing I've got is, like I said, in regards to the applications. I've sent out nine, I've gotten three back. I got two back today. One didn't pass the background, um, one had a multitude of moving violations within the past couple of years, which I know our insurance is going to mock on that. So um, I want to I ask your guys' opinion. I went to advertise in the St. John News, and they won't, the gatehouse media, whoever owns the newspaper, will not just advertise in the newspaper. They have some kind of a contract with a website called monster.com and something else, and it was going to cost almost 200 bucks for a couple weeks' worth of advertising. At this point in time, I chose not to because I think in St. John, we, we've got it out. We've got a pretty good presence as far as letting people know. Is it on the city's website? I don't have your, you just need to bring me much more okay. on it. I mean, if, if you guys feel that's a good. So what, you're just advertising by word of mouth, basically? No, I, we've got it on their, uh, KPOA.org, which is the Kansas Peace Officers Association. Um, that's pretty well known. Um, in Kansas law enforcement where the employment, employment listings are. I just didn't feel that it was a very good use of funds to spend that kind of money. Um, when monster.com, we're going to get a bunch of applications from New York and Florida and stuff like that for, yeah. for people that aren't going to buy a plane ticket to show up for an interview. Can you write a small article so it's not an advertisement? No. They said the only, because, of, because it is an employment advertisement, they would only do it their way. As far as I'm concerned, if that's the way you want to do it, that's the way you do it until you find either you don't find the right people or you do. Then worry about something else. I just didn't like I said, I didn't feel that was a very good You might use reach as many people in St. John by going through the Great Bend paper or something. Pratt well, yeah. started a Chamber of Commerce started a website for visit for, for jobs. I think it's fifty bucks. Okay. It's definitely cheaper than the next paper. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, we've got it on our Facebook page and Terry was nice enough to go round about the newspaper and, and put it on there also. So, and we've got three applicants from here in town that are interested. So, so oh, bring me stuff to put on the website. No, it was actually Todd who I speak. Todd was pretty oh, hot on well, it. Well, good. There you go. <laughs> Nothing else. He's a good driver in the yeah. <laughs> But it, it's, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Basically, all I have is to um, look at the last week of the year and schedule something just to do our encumbrances <coughs> and our transfers and a final, well, it'll be the final for that year, but we will have 13th month appropriations as well. But we'll try to get as many bills in before we move into the next year. So are we looking at, what, the 30th? Can, it can be the 29th, 30th, or 31st, whatever you guys want to do. We can do it 6 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock at night. It'll be a special meeting no matter what. So we just need to advertise so we're, or notify, not advertise, but notify. Anybody have any preference? 1 o'clock on Monday. In the afternoon? Yeah. No. Well, we just do it on the 30th. Like we have. And do it at the regular yeah, the 7 o'clock. Yeah. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. Yeah. 1 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> it's generally a 15 minute meeting. I'll get, have the information out to you ahead of time. 
as much as I can. The appropriations may not be complete because we'll try to hold it open till the last minute so we can get as much in as possible. But as far as the um, encumbrances and the transfers, transfers will all be things that we already approved in the budget for this year, but we don't have to transfer them. We'll make sure we have the funds to transfer them and then you guys get to decide if you want to. That's it as far as I'm Okay, Mr. Williamson contacted me earlier today. He had something this evening he had to attend to, so he is not here. Um, I need, how long are you going to need? Oh, if we could go until um, 8.05, really. Okay. I need a motion to go into executive session for attorney client privilege. Regarding pending litigation. The mayor and council. Mayor and council. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Call the meeting back to order. Um, is there any new business? Is there any old business? Being done, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So I'll make a motion to adjourn and start the bank meeting. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Okay. Land bank. Yes, and basically also just we're going to okay. discuss the okay. I thought there was. But I need to make separate minutes for it. And just next time, I think the best way to get in this situation, because the land bank won't meet as, as often, where every meeting then becomes kind of like a special meeting, because it's not regularly scheduled. So what we'll do is... Uh, recess, city council meeting, go into land bank meeting, when that ends, go back in city council meeting, and okay. um, that's probably the best way to do it, but um, does everybody have the policies that were handed out a long time ago? No. While she's making us copies, at one point, the city council recall the issue of the land bank came, became or was proposed as a result of a piece of property that the city owns now. The city had a roof put on the house, and the question was, can we, can we deed this in a way that would uh, put covenants so that it had to be used as, as a house or it had to be fixed up? This is a way that the adoption of the policies that we will discuss today is a way to create those covenants. And I thought I had printed out a copy of an example of a deed so that you could see how that deed then would incorporate the deeds then, as the land bank deeds property would say that the deed is granted in accordance with provisions of the City of St. John, Kansas ordinance, whatever adopted at a regular meeting the City Council held on this day, expressly made subject to the terms and conditions of the City of, of St. John land bank policy. So you're adopting the policy, the provisions of the policy in the body of the deed. And here's an example of what we did for uh, the city of Greensboro. So now is the time then to include in these policies ways in which to, for lack of a better word, regulate the property that the land bank is then going to either sell or give away, such as requirements that um, a structure be brought up to city code within a period of time, 
such as uh, requirements that the uh, the uh, if it's in a residential area, it's in a residential area, that a house be built on a property within a, and occupied within a certain period of time. Um, plans be approved by the, the land bank. Um, that residential property has to have a certain set number of bedrooms. Um, that kind of thing. Okay. And what happens is if somebody then buys that piece of property and they don't make repairs to the existing structure, and the existing structure makes lapidated, the, the period in which they had to do that passes, property then reverts back to the land bank. So the city's land bank is not making money off this. The purpose of the land bank is to put the property that's not being used for anything, it's, it's probably a drain on taxpayer dollars now, into use. For the benefit of the tax, because if it's into use, then you get property taxes from it. Hopefully, you have somebody who's new to the community who now lives there or is now operating a business um, on that piece of property. Um, in the, the packet that she's printing out, for example, are um, there's the process for purchasing buildable residential land bank properties. Maybe I'll just wait for that. Rewatch them stream games. Are they saved anywhere or is it just a live deal and then it's gone forever? I don't know. I haven't been involved in any of it, but I can find out for you. I mean, that's a pretty cool deal. Ozzy said he watched one the other night on the stream. Is this something with the city? Yeah, it has to be fully reimbursed. Went to the National Groundwater Commission in Nevada. Las Vegas. <laughs> it was an eye-opening experience. What did you go to that for? Why? Because I was asked to. It is. I mean, a lot of technology. Oh, yeah. Ground source heat pump. You already installed. You have one in your office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you look at The convention center in Las Vegas is something to see in itself. That was MGM. I'm not sure we're supposed to be talking about that. We're all waiting. We still waiting? You guys have coffees? Yep. Thank you. Oh, you got one? You need one? There's two extras. Okay, the, the, the agenda, and I, like I said, I, I think we need to consider this a special meeting, so the agenda says we can only discuss policies. At our next meeting, you guys will need to appoint a, a president, and vice president, and treasurer. 
of the land bank from within yourself. So, but I believe it should be the policy just to say for purposes of uh, organizing yourselves that the uh, land bank shall be run by the city council. Okay, um, you guys would be considered the trustees of the land bank at least, at least until you get things up and going. Um, but that, that first part is a, a mission statement, and it needs some editing, but the mission statement that I put together here would be uh, to support home ownership, improve neighborhoods, and otherwise advance the economic and social interests of the city of St. John. So a pretty broad mission statement uh, as kind of the, the backbone of, of how the land bank would be governed with those goals in mind. Um, then this, the, the land bank would need to adopt conditions uh, for uh, what it intends to, to do with those pieces of property. Um, uh, for instance, um, as, I, as I said earlier, um, your goal or your, your desire here is to put conditions on what that property is used for and then if it's not used according to how you want it used, um, it becomes subject to reversion back to the land bank, meaning that um, you guys, either that's done automatically or, or uh, uh, some later decision by court says that they did not do what they were supposed to do according to their requirements, and therefore the property is now owned by the land bank, um, such as failing to meet requirements on uh, usage of the property, using the property for something other than its intended use, um, failing to maintain the, the property. Um, other conditions, you know, suggested is you make them pay for the title insurance, okay, those who are wanting to buy the property, uh, make them pay for the title insurance so that, that when the land is deeded from the land bank to that owner, there's no liability on the part of the city uh, for deeding something the city didn't own. Okay, or deeding something with a cloud on the title. Um, let, let them cover those fees since they're getting the property at either discounted or, or for free. Um, requirements that, um, and if I'm talking too fast, I'm just trying to give you an idea of what's in the policy since it's uh, Are you kind of following I, I, the policy? I'm, Where are you I'm, at? I'm trying to. I'm still on the first page. Okay. But, uh, I'm sorry, I just wasn't finding you. An application process okay, would be a, a, another uh, idea for um, what you would, what would you kind of conditions you put on the property. Uh, make them go through the process of, of informing the city what they intend to do with the property, what their plan is, time frame on, on getting that accomplished. So you can decide, you know, assu assuming in a perfect world you have one piece of property and you have four or five people wanting to do it. And you get the opportunity to decide which use is more meritorious for where that property is located, okay? If they have to go through an application process, and again, the benefit here is, is they're getting a piece of property for, for next to nothing, okay? And the city's benefiting because it's going back on the tax rolls. Um, that CDC, CHDO, you don't need that was a result of something like over from the tornado in Greensburg, so you don't need to worry about that. So we could take that paragraph out? You could take that paragraph out. Okay. Then I'm looking at conditions for applicants prior, and then the next one is, is conditions for applicants after. This is, if, if you want to keep it out of the property out of the hands of somebody that has a history of not taking care of the property they've got, okay? Mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason, they're investing in, in empty lots and then not cutting the grass, um, or they're not paying their taxes. This is, you're limiting, you're saying, Hey, look, we've got an application process, but we're not even going to consider applicants for people um, that still owe back taxes. Still owe taxes on existing property. Well, the point is to put it back on the tax rolls. Why are we putting it back on the tax rolls to give it to somebody who's not going to pay their taxes? Okay. And then afterwards, uh, the properties must be maintained. Okay, um, and there can't be any delinquent. Uh, license fees or taxes. So again, you're, you're saying 
that um, we're giving you this property for next to nothing and you have to maintain the property. Those are all common sense things. Those, those I can put together rather easily. The next, the next area is land bank procedures. Um, what you, you know, as a general policy, knowing that you don't have to stick with this policy, it's kind of a case by case basis. But if somebody came to you and said, you know, I see that you've got some parcels of property, what do you typically sell those properties for? And, and there are, um, there's a, a process then somebody can get started with, such as um, the, uh, that you typically sell the property, non-buildable buildable lots for $100, non-buildable lots would be if somebody has a house and the lot next to them is empty um, in order to keep somebody from doing something on that property or they want to put a garden there or increase their landscape or whatever, they can buy these, these smaller lots, usually some of our drainage ditches and, and things like that. Um, the, uh, and then the next section is, is that process, um, you know, that, that they're required to do certain things with the property. You guys want me to just go through this thing, it's so long, you want me to just go through each one of these policies and you guys care how I, I handle this? No. <laughs> <laughs> My suggestion is let's talk about the process for each specific piece of property, okay? So let's flip to the page. It says process for purchasing buildable residential land bank properties. And how it is written now is it says that the, the kicker is that the successful applicant on the, that second page, second to last bullet point, should begin construction, shall have substantially completed the same within 12 months after purchase of the land bank property. I think that's what you guys are looking for. If you're going to give a piece of property to somebody in hopes that they build a house, they have to have that house substantially completed within 12 months of purchase of that property. I think that's what I need you guys to look at or consider is, is 12 months too long, is 12 months enough. Given the fact that if, if they haven't completed in the 12 months, they still have the opportunity to come back and notify the city council, they look, we need, or the, the trustees of the land bank, we need some more time. And you guys can give them more time. But there needs to be some kind of carrot there. Well, I guess stick in this play, in this, in this situation, um, to get them motivated to do what they, were, they originally intended to do with the property. Otherwise, it can be given to somebody else. Who can do the same? Well, I would think if you're going to give a piece of property to somebody, you'd want to check to make sure that we're going to get something done. I mean, you wouldn't want to give a piece of property to somebody who don't have any intention to do and what it's set forth to. Yeah. Can you also put, I mean, granted you have like a completion time limit, can you? Can we also state, you know, that you purchase this piece of ground or we give it to you, whatever? Start the, construction the construction right needs to be started within 30 to 60 days or 45 days or yep. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you can even require as part of the application process that they have financing in place. So you're, you're saving that time. Because yeah. if, they're, if they're just going around trying to get this property and the idea is to get this property paid off, then they try to go get financing. They may never get financing. Well, and you're just, saving them the time of, of trying to of buying that property even though you're selling it for maybe hundred dollars. So would we need to set all of that out in this? The, this would be the time because and this the policies can be amended at any time, say something's not working or you run into problems you don't want to happen again. The policy as it's adopted on the date that the deed is drafted is the policy that governs. The, those are the conditions of that deed. Well, here's a suggestion. We all have copies again. If you and if you're willing, um, I think everybody's got my email address. It's sjmayerowens at gmail.com. If you don't, um, I'm gonna scan this and create a new document. If you guys want to send me what you want to see in the policy and I will start working on a draft for the next meeting 
so that we can have this specific to what we want it to say and review that at that point in time? Does that make more sense? Well, some of it, but I mean, some of it, I mean, somebody like this starting date time, I mean, everybody's going to have their own diet idea. If we want to do it, then we could have that when you do it, actually, you know what I mean? Instead of me, tech, nobody else says anything about it, well, we're going to have to go right back all the way through this process again anyway. You guys, you guys want to be able to reply to each other's emails. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, that, and um, grandfather and that, time that over here doesn't even have emails. Have a, so. a problem with open meetings, too, doesn't it? I don't know. When you guys do yeah. Yeah. progressive type emails. Oh, is that then. considered serial meeting? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, but only if I send an email out to everybody or one of us sends an email out to everybody, what I was suggesting was that they individually oh, they email me to you and they and have so that I can draft the policy, but whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so does, does, do all the time limits and everything then have to be developed in the policy or would it be a case of we'd be looking at amending the policy every time we looked at it in the project? The best way to do it is to put it in the policy and then you can amend the individual projects on a case-by-case -case, case basis. So John would be keeping minutes. So if, if uh, Mr. X comes and says, you know, I've, I've had this piece of land now for 12 months, I've got the foundation poured, but you know, the weather has been so horrible I can't start construction. The trustees then can vote and decide to give him more, you know, six more months to, to get where he needs to be. Okay? Or you can say, can you bring in the bank and can the bank tell us that you're you know you're actually receiving financing or something like that. You can you can so do could a, we like be thinking of the property that we actually have right now. That's a great as point. we're working through this. What is it that you would want to be able to stipulate and hold conditions on for that particular property, maybe. You know, such as it's occupied by the same person for a set period of time, you know, which keeps then a, a, a landowner or a landlord from coming in and using it. And, and maybe there's nothing wrong with that, okay? We've got a lot of bad landlords in, in crack, okay? And a lot of people that would not take good care of the property would make them, you know, money. Not Could they basically say if, if you purchase it, you have to live in it? I uh, mean, you could even you could even do that. Okay, you're getting to the point of splitting hairs though between uh, are we saying it, it's specifically residential property for the person who's so it's a single family home. Okay, the, the, we're only going to sell it to the people who intend to live in the property. Well, if I remember right, when we first acquired that property, it was set up to be auctioned off as soon as we got the roof, roof put on. Is that not correct? Mm -hmm. Well, that's yeah. when we, but you guys wanted to put stipulations on it and we right. couldn't do that. Well, we got to get this formed and then we can do that. We can only right. do that with the land bank. Without the land bank, we can't put stipulations on it. You just have to open it up to whoever. And you wouldn't have to auction it off now. Yeah. You can just, you know, put, put sure. on put on the website, we have a house, you know, we're, we're, we're taking soliciting bids from the public. Because the land bank is not subject to those types of rules. Well, I think we better structure around this one we've already got in limbo here. Right. And then probably amend it as we go. Yeah, there'll be a, a, a time where the council or the land bank has to sign a letter of intent so they can take it to the bank and get financing. It says, I have 60 days to get financed. If I don't get 60 days, then I give it up. Do you, do you have uh, an example of like an application form for something like I, that? I do. I think for for the property that we're actually looking at, shouldn't we be be looking at the the process for purchasing land bank properties with structure? You, you bought, yeah, but my suggestion is to, to get things figured out all at once, because otherwise you're going to be amending your land bank. Well, yeah, I agree with that, but I okay, that's fine. I mean, are you 
want them to, I mean, like like the one with the 12 months after purchase, the construction has to be complete and all that other. So if we want to put in a, a deadline, or say we want to put in a deadline for starting, now would be the time to do that. I, my thought, and, and you guys can, can mix this, is I think probably Mel needs to sit down with it and see how it works with, with how you guys handle permits and that kind of thing. Um, he may want to, since he's really going to have to be, well, really John and Mel and people come in and say, I want to fill an application, they're going to be the ones answering a lot of questions. Um, so let them look at this, see what works and doesn't work. Um, and then if you guys have suggestions, you, know, you can. Is there a stipulation in here that either limits us or doesn't about putting taking it to an auction? Say say we did want to, the land but land bank just wanted to call cars. The, He's uh, going to auction it off following all these guidelines. The highest bidder gets it. Is there any is there anything that would be wrong with that that's in here right now? Yeah. What the one, one? The first part. The first. Paragraph of condition set on land bank says the governing body, the city of St. John, serves in the capacity of, and makes all final decisions on land bank property conveyances. So you you could, on a specific piece of property, decide that it's just not the kind of property you want in the land bank, even though it's already in the land bank. So let's just auction it off. Can we kill, still keep the stipulation that it has to be a residential house? And all that other, with with that stated down the the auction. You're talking about the property that we have right now. Any property. Okay. No, I don't see a problem with that because you're setting this is setting minimum standards. Okay. You're saying, for instance, we're gonna we're gonna take at least a hundred dollars. Okay, for a piece of property, but but what we can waive that hundred dollars. So you're setting minimum standards. The idea is that. Um, you're talking about procedure. What what really needs to be ironed out because procedure can be changed based on the property. Okay, what you really need to iron out is what those stipulations or conditions are on the different types: buildable property zone, residential; right. buildable property zone, commercial; uh, non-buildable residential. That's what you do. So if the land bank decides on this piece of property, we've got so many interested people. Where we don't have any interested people, but we're tired of holding it in the land bank. Let's do an auction and see what we, and just get what we can get out of it, okay? But that person has to take that piece of property subject to the deed that we're going to draft, and that deed says that it is subject to the conditions and policies of the land bank policy of the city of St. John adopted on. Okay. Yes. So there would be four different categories of which we would want to set those conditions. Right. And then I don't I don't know just because I'm not familiar, but I'm assuming this, this, somebody comes in, they want to build a, a new commercial structure, there's a process. <laughs> right. I mean I'm trying to think when <laughs> it's I mean we've got an application and all that. It doesn't uh -huh. take that long to actually yeah. go through all of that. If if it doesn't have a zoning issue, yeah. then it's it's just a building permit it, it just and the reason why I think Mel needs to look at it first is to make sure that that stuff meshes so you're not having an issue down the road or something. I mean, most of this is going to be pretty, you know, I think the council will need to you know, be the ones to decide, you know, we're going to give them 12 months to, to show they're going to have something done. I mean, you guys can decide. Because we that. can make the building permit a certain length of time, correct? Well, by ours, it has to be, you know, uh, within, within 180 days, they have to at least have work done on it, so okay, we don't want to Mark comes in and gets the uh, empty lot. The land bank gives him that empty lot. He comes in tomorrow, says he, gonna, he wants to build a new house on that property. How and many days does right? it, and it's zoned right, how many days does it take to get that, all the permits to do that? From the city? If he comes if in, he with, comes all in with his... We can have it within a day, probably. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the, to realistically say, if, if somebody got a piece of, that piece of property 
and we wanted to put a stipulation that construction has to start within 30 days. That would not oh, be out of line as far as on our state of problem at all. You're, you're certainly weeding out those people that just want to... Well, you're off. weeding out somebody that may or may not, they're just going to tie it up for 12 months. Right. Right. Yeah. And this way they tie it up for 30 days, and, yeah. 30 and if days. it's not started... And, and you got to remember that each city is going to be different. After Greensburg, there are a lot of people that were all over you know, the area that moved, and, and they did need insurance money and that kind of thing. Right. Uh, but you're, in your circumstances, you know, people move to St. John. If, if they want to live here, they're going to live here, and this gives an opportunity for you guys to make sure that they've got a place to live or a place to build. So you guys agree we ought to have something in there as far as a starting date? Yeah. yeah. So like 30 days? 30 days sounds good to yeah. me. Okay. That allows, you, that allows you to secure the land bank property and then go get your financing. Yeah. It? Mm -hmm. 30 I, days, I would think, but I would honestly think they'd probably well, have started by Well, I would think if you're going to build a house, you'd have some financing put in place. Yeah. I mean, if you're I mean, you'd be I talking went, to somebody about some money. I went down that road. I said, I'd like to build a house. He said, well, do you have any property? I said, no. Well, I had to get the property put in my right. name before I could do anything. Right. And then they had to go appraise the property and a house off the blueprints. So, that, you know, I, I would think 30 days would be enough to get financial. Yeah, by the time I went and got my blueprints drawn up, and then they went and got an appraised from Great Bend Dodge City to match the blueprints and back to the bank. And I mean, we could put 60. a stipulation in there of 30 days to get it started or another, I mean, an extension on that, couldn't we? Right, they could come back to, to the trustees at any point and, and say, update. say yeah. Yeah. just to let you know where I am, I'm making all this effort, this is, right. they said I need right. to but It's right going to be 45 days before I know whether I got financing or not. Right. And, and, and you don't, the reversion doesn't have to be automatic, okay? If, if they don't have something done within 30 days, it doesn't automatically become back the land bank's property. But you can if you want to. You, but my suggestion is, is, is you always, you know, give people the benefit of the doubt, at least the first time around. You know, you know, you guys know from personal experience when progress is being made and when progress is not right. being made. And it's a small enough town, you know when people are meeting with the banker. Right, but then again, you don't want to be like a bunch of, I mean, once you state a rule, you need to kind of have, like you said, a stickiness to it. Otherwise, that, that's, the rule's really not even worth it. But that's the, benefit, that's the benefit of the land bank. You guys are basically dictating public policy and, 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 and how it's just another tool in running the city, but you're not governed by, you know, you, you guys decide what's going to happen. It, you can pick one company over another company. Right. Okay. You're, just, you're, not, you're not stuck, you know, going through this bid process or whatever that you normally okay. would see in a situation. Well, I guess at least on that one we want to put in that it has to be started within 30 days. Yeah. Yeah, is that something that you want to put on all three of our, I mean? Well, on two of them you're not going to be building nothing. Right. It's already built. The existing property that we have currently, if someone wanted to move into it now, right now, they'll forgive you that. Mm -hmm. Is it livable? I mean, yeah, it's a livable. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. I mean, it's it needs to be clean, <laughs> but I mean, yeah. I mean, if someone wanted to go in there, I mean, we have not checked out to make sure the furnace and everything work, you know, that part of it. But you know, as far as if they want to move in, you sure could. And we've got utilities and all that. Yeah, so, he's, in he's, this case, then, what do we require of somebody? I mean, do we put it up for public auction and stipulate that it has to remain a residential property and that's the end of it? Or are we wanting to be more restrictive than that? Well, I don't think you can, I don't think you can uh, do anything with commercial property where it's at, Mayor. It has, to be it has to be a residential. I understand that, but as opposed to somebody going in and bulldozing it or... That, that was a concern, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, I think as far as that down. property goes, I mean, I think we need to, whether we auction it off or we give it away or you sell it for a hundred bucks, whatever we do, I think there needs to be a stipulation. Yes, it needs to be a house. And whether, you, whether we put a... I mean, because that's what we're after. Right. Um, the, and the second thing is, 
I don't think we can go in there and put a whole bunch of stipulations way on down the line. And maybe we can, but I don't know why we'd want to. Yeah, but yeah. give them 30 days to be moved in or something yeah. from the time the deed goes over. Yeah, that's that's all or I was trying to do. Working get to. on it. You yeah. know, maybe they want to do some improvements and they're yeah, going to I mean, be able to do that. And that I mean, days. but I would state a deadline of when you got to be in there of, of 30 days. And once again, I mean, if they come in and talk to us and say, you know, it's going to be 45 days or even 60 days for them in there, but we see them over there working, we know they're, they're trying, and yeah, I mean, there needs to be some kind of. But I think you, if you don't start out with a deadline, then you're just going to end up with something that never gets started. Is my personal opinion. Oh, I thought really Yeah, and that's the, that was that was the detail I was trying to get to. Yeah, I mean, I think like on the on the property we're talking about, or another, if we get another property like that, that. You still need to put kind of some kind of stipulation in there that yes, it's if it's a house that's worth living in, then yeah, that's what it's going to be used as. And I, you might want to put something in there. The utilities has to be turned on in 15 days from the time you accept the property. Is this? I don't know. Is this the first time that a property like this has come into possession of the city? Yeah. And it was just a, a deed in lieu of foreclosure. There, you probably what you need to do then is is you've got the section for process of purchasing properties with structure is process of purchasing properties that the city received and in that kind of situation is, is it and I, I'd have to think about how it's worded but it, where you're the city's basically getting a house it, um, because that's going to be different. <laughs> I hate to say that it, it's livable because we, we'd have to massage that language because yes. somebody's definition of livable is going to be different. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I'm not. But if this, if if Mel, who's you know the city administrator, has determined that the house is fit for living, then then maybe maybe that's the kind of the way. Is is he's the one that? I mean. Like I say, we would have to, we need to find out if the furnace works. I mean, that'd be the only thing, you know. Uh, it's got it needs, it needs to be cleaned up. Yeah. Well, right. yeah, that's elbow grease, or they but, can hire somebody to do that. But. Right. I mean, is that something we want to do, or just say, you know, this is it? I mean, we, we just, the main whole thing is we've, we've got a roof on it. It's a sound structure. We want a family in there living, and we don't want to tore down right. within the foreseeable future. That's what we're after. I don't think we want to get in the cleaning business. No, I, I mean, to me, why can't it sell as is? Yeah, yeah. Right. You're giving them a house. I mean, you're, they're, yeah. Right. We're giving we're them a structure that's... We're not giving them the house. No. We, we, have some, we have some equity in it that we'd like to get back. But the house is discounted based on the fact that it's oh, yeah. yeah. discounted. Yeah. So yeah. that, that numbers aren't even factored into what, whatever the house goes for. Um, so, so as is is probably the best way to do it. I, I guess future. I mean, we don't want to become landlords. Yeah, you don't want to go in there, fix the furnace, check the plumbing. And, th and that's why I was saying. And then guarantee give, it's right. all going to be good. That, that's why you. Said, that's why I was saying let's give them a starting point of when they got to be there. I mean, 30 days by the time you receive the deed, they can surely check that stuff out and know. There's, what? Mm. there's terminology used in, in statute in, in different instances where you, where there, a city has decided to condemn a, a piece of property, and um, I think that the, and I can look up the statute, but the term is substantial progress okay, okay, towards yeah. inhabiting the property. Okay, and, and and it's open for interpretation, obviously, but substan you know what substantial progress is, and it, 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 it's got to pass the smell test. Okay, if, if it sits vacant for 30 days, and then they decide on the 31st day, they're going to start moving in boxes. That's not substantial progress. If they've hired an electrician, or they've hired an H, somebody of an HVAC guy, or, or to go out there, you know, that may be substantial progress. Again, you guys kind of get it decide. Okay, you can expand that time frame because you've seen substantial progress. Right. Well, I was going to say, I Personally, I think we need to, like I said, whether it's 30 days or whatever you guys think, or 15 days, whatever. But I do think there needs to be, at least where we're, we're talking about a property that already has a structure on it, 
that it, we give them 30 days and they need to be living in it for the least time. Yeah, at least they, at that point they come back and explain to us. Well, why. the first step is they need to bring it up to code within 30 days. Right. I mean, or within a set period of time. Mm -hmm. And, and right. that, that way you're not forcing them into a structure that's not even up to code. Okay, so, right. so the requirement is they have to bring the structure up to code. Is that that one property time. actually is up to code, though, isn't it? I mean, as far as our pretty city much, codes go? Yeah. Pretty much, I would say, I mean... You know, we adopt the... I guess, I guess personally, I would also think that if we're going to give that property away, we would have it up. I mean, if it takes a little bit of equity to make it up to city codes, at least you're giving something away that is at city codes. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking about, and I can't remember, I think it's it got a disconnect off? on that. Yeah. On the electric, I believe it's got a breaker back there, if I remember right. So, other than that. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not yeah. talking about having an electrical inspection and all that, though, because the city doesn't do that. Right. Our city codes. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, I would at least think that if we're going to either sell it or hmm. however you want to look at it, that we would at least have it up to city code before we did that. And then other than that, it is as is, so to speak. Yeah, or, or have it as is. And, well, I, I think, think more important than your city code would be what your financial company is going to. <laughs> well, yeah, that would be that, between them problem. and their financial right. company, right. not us. Right. Well, they may require home inspection. Right. And you may not be able to get the money if it's not up to yeah. Yeah. I, I think Sometimes they put an X amount of dollars in escrow until you update your electrical after purchasing okay. property. And I think leaving it as is is probably the best way to go because you're not you're not trying to develop something though you have a house now, okay, and you want the, this first policy to take care of that. But you, you don't want to have to go back and update your, your policies every time. Right. So so I, I think what you need is to leave it broad enough, you know, have it required that it's brought up to city code, okay? If if this, the city administrator determines it's not possible to bring it to city code, okay, um, such as you have an empty lot with a, a garage that's leaning 30 degrees, that the requirement is that they tear down the structure with a set period of time. This, I don't think the city wants to be in the business of, of maintaining these lots beyond cutting the grass until the point they're sold. The, the no, I, I agree with that. No. And so, and, and uh, like he suggests, it, that may take care of itself because the financing may come through an entity that requires home inspection, termite right. inspection, and that kind of thing. But my idea, I mean, just our city codes, which would just, like you said, like a, a break art disconnect, or a disconnect on, the on the outside of the house or whatever, I would think that for a little bit of equity that we would have in it, that we would recover that in our deal, plus that would help them make sure that the financing would be that much easier. And that's why we decided to have, go ahead and have a roof. Right. put on there because right. we knew nobody could get alone the way that road right. was so we'll it's not a bad old house no it's not yeah, yeah i think it's a clean clean enough, here. <laughs> a good starter house or somebody that yeah i, I still don't have to think that somebody could be live there if right. were. let's just throw a scenario i don't want to waste a lot of time but let's just say the house for sale to the west which it is that person buys that house and then trey buys the house on the east side and they both go together and buy the house from the land bank. And they both want to add a attached garage. Can they tear that house down? Would we'll change the policy for those two people? They both want attached garages. They need that property. They can demolish that house, add on to their properties. This can be changed at any time if they show. You wouldn't have to change this document. I think you could. They could come in and make that request, and then you could decide to apply that. Towards the to that piece of property, right. um, there. I mean, it, they would have had to gone through an application process, and I guess that would be that would come out in the application process what they intend to do with the piece of property. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what your housing stock is. Whether you guys are short on, <laughs> well, I think <laughs> everybody's small sort of. That's housing. why we wanted to yeah. do this thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's yeah. what it's all about. But you're saying it could be maybe a different type of property yeah. and that kind of scenario. And so, I'm just could we, we, is this policy going to be broad enough that you could make that determination? Yeah. Is that your question? Yeah. I'm just saying the, the property right next to it is for sale and it's very tight. I mean, there's like 
no extra space past the driveway, or whatever, and they want to buy some more property, because it's set in stone, and they can't tear it down, or all they have to do is ask us. They just have to go back to the land bank committee, correct? I think they just have to weigh it out. Do we want them to have a garage or we want another house for something? Yeah, right. they, um, they could fill an application and say, you know, it says in the application what do you intend to do with this piece of property. They could check other and write down care account and, <laughs> and put it in a garage. But, you know, a lot of times these county tax sales, they have these funky shaped, you know, triangle pieces of property. Or, or you, I don't even know how they become delinquent or how they ever anybody ever owned these pieces of property but those are great for land banks because you could sell those for nominal values to neighbors who could use them as just an extension of, of their property and that a lot of times you see that happening you know they, they want this addition that you know like I said plant a shady tree or or, or to add a garden or something and also the way this is say a, the next tax sale that comes up the land bank can honestly go and purchase every piece at that auction. You know, and I think what we'll just need to do is coordinate with the county commission and ask the county commission, you know, are you guys going to sell these things for the, the tax value? You're going to sell them for a dollar? You know, and, and just ask them. You know, like, I don't know how popular your tax sales are. Probably that comes back to the city, whether they let it go for a dollar or whether they right. start. Last time we just said get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, they tried selling them for. Some of them twice. And you get a and sheriff's never deed. Never got a bid because yeah. we started at two thousand or eighteen hundred. You get a sheriff's deed, rights to the land bank, and it, it becomes tax. The taxes go away. The liens go away on the property at that point. You clear up the, uh, the title a little bit. And then you guys can do whatever you want. Because I mean, I mean that, that's one reason I wanted it for them too, is because there's a lot of empty lots that you could do that. They have not been used for anything where you could get it and you know offer it to each. We're going to split this lot if you want half of it and you want the other half. Mm -hmm. Or the owner could donate it to the land bank for a tax credit, maybe. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that way you could, I mean, you could help at least keep that on. You mm -hmm. could control that, and like you said, you wouldn't have individuals buying property and you, you still end up not having it taken care of. Right. Yeah, I would say half an hour, John, will work out for details and let's. <laughs> well, I think we'd need something going in on the front end of the thing. For <laughs> <laughs> sure. time factor. I mean, you guys could take these and look at them, anything that sticks out, you know, as far as what, what is this CDA, CDC, CHDO that sticks out everywhere I come across it? Yeah, I'm not the only that. That are, and I forget what it stands for. I think they're federal. It's community, community development. development organizations. Yeah. Oh, so that doesn't okay. pertain to that. I think that's a holdover from the tornado and Greensburg. So wherever you see that, you can use it. I, I, if you guys want to pay me to reinvent the wheel on <laughs> some of this stuff, I'm more than willing. But <laughs> well, I just kept seeing it, and I never did see where it was actually spelled out to what it was. It's on that very front page. All land banks may be way for community development corporations or community housing development organizations. Oh, okay. I mean, would it be feasible to, with what changes we brought up already, kind of draw up a, have Jonah kind of draw up a draft, a draft, and get that to us? Maybe. Well, is there like, anything on here that you want out? I mean. Well, that's what I was saying. To where maybe like next meeting we could, we could have this like a week in advance or something like that, to where we could honestly sit down and go through it on our own time. And see if there's anything else, and then finalize this at the next meeting. And, and I, I will re make recommendations to Jonna for things that, that probably need to come out, and, and things from the discussion that could that could probably and go. Yeah, and maybe. Language. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of heard of everything, and then maybe know how to word it, and then you could write that up, and we could look at it, and then finalize it next week. For that our meeting on the thirtieth, okay. can we add that to the agenda on that thirtieth, and just be done with it? 
probably, if, if you're going to meet, I mean, I suggest just doing it at the city council meeting because you'll, you also need to choose uh, president within yourself, president, vice president, and treasurer from the land bank, <laughs> which we can't talk about today because it's not on the agenda. Right. But I mean, if we did that, 30th would be the next meeting, correct? Yes, it'll be a special meeting. So we would have to make sure we put we just have to make election of officers spelled out on the agenda. Well, along that would with be, we would have to do the land bank on the agenda. So I'd do an agenda within the agenda? I can get you an example of how okay. that would work. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the suggestion of my partner because I went into it. I was like, how do you do this if you only have regular scheduled meetings? He says, well, I recess, go in the land bank, and then come back. Did that house get winterized? It was already winterized. They already had already winterized it, and we've done nothing to change it. So if they did a good job with their stickers on it and says this has been winterized or whatever, so if they did do it, we should be okay. Yeah, we we did get keys and stuff to it, didn't we? Yeah. And the roof is finished. The roof is finished. Yeah. Did it look good? Yes. Yeah. And the deeds in the safe. <laughs> I mean, does that sound feasible to you guys instead of, I mean, that way everybody can kind of look through it and see what, Absolutely. See what they think they won't change or yeah, what we need to change and then just it won't take near as long on the 30th than it will if we just sit here all night trying to thumb through it and changing <laughs> this or changing that and backtracking. It says here, I mean, right here, priority it, is for home ownership. But I mean, she can she can draw up the draft according to what changes we've already made and what he thinks need to be changed real quick. And if we've got something and then else we can we look come at that. What in the meantime, before she gets the draft out, you know, looking this over, if you've got something that you see that right. you want to change, just let Jonna know, and then that way she can incorporate it into what she's working on. I'll give everybody a little time to think yeah, about it. Yeah, don't do it, though, the day of. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. I will be working on encumbrances and um, your transfers. <laughs> well, like I was saying, I mean, if we could get it four or five days in yes. advance, I mean, everybody knows that, say, by the end of a week from tonight, all your changes need to be to her, and then otherwise we'll have to do it that night. So that work for you? Make a motion to adjourn meeting, then? Yep. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor?